Now, of course, always the first question is how to create things, how to create a collection of data using list, because without it, we cannot do anything, right? So let's learn how we can do that. And so now I'm going to show you step by step how to create a list. And we're going to start with the easiest one. We're going to create an empty list. So in order to create one, we're going to go and use the square brackets. And if you don't enter anything in between them, then actually you are creating an empty list. Now, in order to see the output, as usual, we going to use the print and then we print the variable empty so let's see what we're going to have look at the output we just have again the square brackets and nothing inside it so this we call an empty list now of course we could check as well the data type of our variable in order to understand that we create actually a list and not something else and we're going to use the built-in function type and then we're going to pass for it our variable so let's try this out now look to the output we are getting the class list so with that you are sure I just created the list. Now behind the scenes, what can happen is that Python gonna create an object in the memory and our variable gonna be pointing to this object. And the type of this object gonna be a list, but still we don't have anything inside it. So it is still an empty. Now, of course, we don't want to leave it empty. We want to have our data inside it. So there are multiple ways on how to put data inside the list. The simplest one is to enter the data manually. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go and create a list of letters so i'm gonna call the variables letters and then i'm gonna make a new list and in between i will start adding values like for example the letter a then b and a third one c so as you can see i'm entering the values manually inside the list and we can try and print this to the output and as well check the data type so let's go and execute it now as you can see in the output we are getting a list full of data and as well since we are using the square brackets it is the class list now by looking back to this behind the scenes python gonna go and create an object in the memory for each value and the type of the object is gonna be of course a string so we're gonna have one for a another one for b and third one for c now by looking to this we have now two types of objects right we have the values the string value and we have the object list now by looking to this you can see python is not creating the string objects directly inside the list it is really outside so actually what is missing now is the connection between the list and the string objects that's why python gonna create internally in the list something called array and inside it it's gonna store like an address so that means those addresses gonna be used in order to point or to reference to the string objects now and of course the address values are not that really important so now by looking to this the list object is actually just a box of pointers it does not hold the real informations and the pointer is going to be pointing to another object like for example the string objects where inside it the real values are stored and this is exactly how python deals with the lists and of course we could make a list of numbers like for example numbers and we could have one, two, and three. So let's print it in the output as well. And you can see we have now a nice list of numbers. And now by looking back to this, we're going to have again a list with pointers. And those pointers are going to point now to a new object. It's going to be the integer objects where they store the numbers one, two, three. So it is the same concept. Now, of course, it is very important to understand that you can go and mix stuff so inside the same list you could store different data types so we could go and make a mixed list and we could store stuff like for example one a a boolean true and as well we could use the none so we could have a nice mix of different data types and if you go and of course print it or check as well the data type so let's go and execute you could see I'm still using a list, but with different data types. And it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be again the same thing. You're gonna have an object list with different pointers. And this time they are pointing to different types of objects. It's gonna point to an object integer, an object string, a boolean, and a none type. So Python is very flexible and you could have a mix of different data types in the same list. And by the way, my friends, if you like this type of contents where I go and start sketching the different concept of Python and show you how things works behind the scenes, you will not find this type of content in any other course because it takes a lot of time sketching, editing and working on it. That's why if you like this type of content, then support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting 
this can really help to reach other people like you. And by the way, don't forget to check out my blog. I write weekly topics about data. All right, so now let's go back. Okay, so now there is another way to create a list in Python by using the built-in function list. So how is this going to work? Let's say that we have a string value data. So the data type here is a string. And now if you go and use the list function, what can happen? Python going to take each character of your string and put it in a separate item in complete new list. So the D going to be one item the A gonna be another, and so on for each letter of your string. So now by looking to this, you can see we can reuse the data that we have in different shape and convert it to a data structure, a list. So this is another way on how to create a brand new list from already existing data. Okay, so now let's try this out. So we're going to go and create an empty list by using the function list. So if you do that and print the empty, so let's go and execute it. You can see in the output, we are getting an empty list. So as you can see, using this function, we can create a list. Now, of course, if you want to put items inside it, you have to use something inside the function. So let's go and create another variable. And currently it is holding the value Python. So it is a string value. But now I would like to have all those values as a list. So let's go and print this out. Letters and execute. So as you can see, it is very simple string value. But now the thing is, I would like to have a list. So I don't want to have it as a string value. It is very simple. If you go and say a list and then put the string value inside it like this. Now, if you go and execute it. Now look at this. Python did create a list and converted each letter of our string as an item of this list. So that I have just created a list out of another value, another data type. And of course, for the list function, we can pass any data type that actually a sequence. So for example, let's go and create something called numbers and then a list. Now remember with the for loop, we could use a function to generate numbers like for example, that range. Now if you go and say, okay, go and generate five numbers. So with that, it's going to be like a sequence of numbers from zero to four. And then you say, okay, after you generated, go convert it to a list. So put it in a list with that, you will have a list of numbers. So let's try this out and say numbers and let's go and execute it. Look at this. We have now a list of numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four. Those items came actually from that generator range. So as you can see, all what you need is actually a sequence. So this is another way on how to create a list by converting the data from one data type to a list. Alright, so far everything is easy, right? Now we're gonna go to something very interesting. So far all what we have is actually a very simple list with a straight line of items. This is actually one row of data or we can call it one dimension. But now sometimes I don't want to have only one row. I would like to have multiple rows. It looks like something like a table and we can do that using something called nested list. It is very simple. If you put a list inside another list, if you do that, then you will have multiple rows and you will have the shape of 2D. Now how Python can store this? We still have our variable that is pointing to an object called list and inside this object, we can have as well some pointers. But this time, instead of pointing directly to the values, they will point to another object list. So in this example, our list is going to be pointing to another two object lists. And of course, since they are an object list, they as well going to be pointing to something else. And in this example, they will be pointing to three different string values. So by looking to this, my friends, the object list could point to the real data, but as well, they could point to another list. So it is very simple. It is a list inside another list. So now let's go and create a nested list or a matrix. It is very simple. We're going to start with the first list. And now inside it, we will not directly add the values. We will go and create another list. So now as you can see square brackets inside another square brackets and only inside the second one, I will be creating our values. So for example, A, B and C. So this is the first list, the first row, and then I'm going to go and separate it with a comma and then create the second list. So now we're going to go and add the other values like D, E and F. Okay, so now let's go and print it and check how it's going to look like in the output. 
and check as well the data type let's go and execute it now as you can see the class can still a list and with that i'm getting my matrix now in order to make it easier to read and to write usually each time you are starting a new list just make it in a new line it is just now easier to understand and to read and of course it can still works python gonna print it but together in the same line so this is very simple this is how you can create a matrix 2d list or a nested list and as usual you could make mixed stuff so let me show you another example so i'm gonna call it mixed matrix so now i could start for example with string values like a and p and then start a new matrix where actually there are numbers so one two and three python is totally flexible you don't have to commit actually with the same number of items so in the first list we have two items and the second one we have three items and maybe a third list where we have boolean value like for example true so if you go and print it matrix so we are not getting any errors as you can see python is totally flexible but it is your job to make sure this makes sense so now let's do a quick recap we have different ways on how to create a list the first one we could create an empty list if you use a square brackets and nothing inside it or you can use the function list without specifying anything inside it this is really nice in order to create it and plan later to add the items another way is by manually adding the items you can use it if you know already what are the items in the list and another way you could build a matrix if you put different lists inside a list List. so it's like we are nesting and it is great in order to build a data structure like tables where you have rows and columns so if you have the data already but in different data type or an object you can go and just simply convert it to a list so you will get the same data but in different objects so with that you have learned everything on how to create a list from the scratch and now you can go and apply a lot of methods and things on the list